Hello everyone, I'm Chris Clamp and welcome to my studio. Those of you that are new to the channel, let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Chris Clamp. I am an oil painter, but prior to being an oil painter full time, I worked in the evenings and on weekends in my studio. I had a variety of different day jobs, but the one that really was so formative to me was a job that I held in which I worked at a high-end commercial gallery for 15 years. I picked up a lot of tips and tricks during that time working at this art gallery that really helped me understand a bit more about how to navigate the commercial art world. I want to share the information that I've picked up along the way and help create a better community. I've learned a lot through that job and things that they do not teach you in art school. So let's dive in to today's topic. Okay, everyone. So today I want to talk about the idea of studies. I am at the beginning phase of working on my next exhibition. The exhibition is scheduled for early next year, that's 2025. I have about five months of good solid work in the studio to have the paintings finished in time. However, it's going to take some careful planning and studies to make sure that I can stay on target, to have this done in an efficient way and produce work that I'm very proud of. Now, one thing I want to discuss with you all today is the ideas of studies being a finished work of art. When I was in art school, we were encouraged to keep a sketchbook. And the way that the sketchbook was sort of taught is it was a bit more of a book of ideas, like a journal. It wasn't really a book of sketches. And what I've learned through my time of working at a commercial art gallery is it's great for an artist to have a variety of different things to show and market from your body of work. For example, let's say you have a body of work, an exhibition that's going to be a dozen paintings or so. It would be great if some of those paintings were a variety of different sizes because it gives a different price point for someone to approach. If they can't afford the large painting, maybe there's something that is a bit more in line with their budget. That is where studies also become relevant. You could produce a series of studies that's not only being helpful for you to plan your work, but the studies could also be beautiful works of art in their own and could also fill another part of your price point, your structure, and be a bit more approachable to a different collector. So where I am right now with my paintings that I'm working on for my show is I'm wanting to make some drawings, some beautiful detailed drawings, but I want, I've want i been very interested in charcoal recently and working on toned paper. So I thought I would make some very beautiful drawings that would help me plan out the works that, um, that I'm going to make oil paintings for, but also these drawings could help me in the process of understand the painting better. These are going to be monochromatic works, obviously, but if they were color, it also helps you plan out your color study as well. I've done this in the past with small panels or little uh, paintings on uh, arches oil paper. That's something I'll talk about in a few moments. But until we get there, I just want to mention the idea of how your study can be more than just a rough preparatory sketch. Now, I still keep a sketchbook and I still work in that sketchbook kind of like I used to when I was in school. I use it as a journal and I also have some very rough scratchy compositional notes that I take inside. But when I get to planning phases for my painting, when I want to devote a bit more time to understand where I'm going, I actually slow things down and do it with more intention. 
say my painting is going to be 20 inches square, I will prepare a, a piece of paper that is torn down to also be a square. Say it's eight inches square or 10 inches square, and then I can plan out the format of the composition in that shape. At that phase, if I realize that the shape is all wrong, it's easy to tear it down, experiment, and find what sort of rectangle a proportion is going to work out properly. It's a lot easier to do that than when you're on your stretched canvas and you realize that there's a problem. While we're talking about studies, let's talk about paper. Because most of the time, studies are done on paper. So you go to your art supply store. You see a wall of different papers you can choose from. It can be a little confusing. Now, what I suggest is experiment with a few different kinds of papers to find out what works best for you and the way that you work. You will see papers that are different weights, 70 pound, 90 pound, 100, 200, up to 300 pound watercolor paper. That doesn't mean that the sheet of paper weighs 300 pounds. That's just a gauge in terms of its thickness and its weight. A 300 pound watercolor paper is very rigid. It's almost like a thin board. And what's great about it is if you are using a water-based medium like watercolor or acrylic, ink even, it's not going to wrinkle and cockle as much as a thinner, lighter weight paper. So experiment with those things. See what gives you the mark that is your mark, that helps you plan your study the best way. You'll also see paper that's listed as cold press or hot press paper. And what that means is the texture. A cold press paper will actually have a texture on it it's kind of like the texture on an orange peel. It's how I like to describe it. It can give you a nice broken edge when you're drawing that can be very soft. A lot of people like that. If you're working in a pigment, uh, a medium like charcoal or pastel, it can help hold that a little bit more. Hot pressed paper is very smooth. So picture like a, a paper that you might draw on with with a um, pencil that might be in your sketchbook. Personally, I prefer a hot press paper due to how I work, but everyone works differently, so other, everyone's gonna find something that will work better for them. So experiment. If you're in school, go to your printmaking studio. There's always scrap pieces of paper in there that people have torn down, and you could try different things. A different Strathmore, a different Arches paper, a different Stonehenge of different weights and colors. You know, you might see a paper that's more of a buff color or gray instead of a pure white, and you really respond to that. Now, I'm mentioning all these different papers you could get because in many ways, I think that these become more useful uh, than a sketchbook. You could buy uh, a few sheets of, of a 30 by 22 inch paper like I've described, something that, that you like, and then tear it down to a usable size. Say it's nine by 12, eight by 10, 11 by 14, and almost make your own sketchbook by having these loose sheets of paper, maybe hold them together with binder clips or just keep them separate and work on a piece one at a time. Now, if you treat your sketch and your study with a, an intent and you plan it and you refine it better. Now that's a work of art that you can market. There's many artists that I love out there that if I knew that they had, say an eight by 10 drawing that I could own, I would be very excited about that because I know that their paintings are probably out of my financial reach. And there'll be someone that is a collector of yours that will also really respond to what you are making as a study. So. Please keep these things in mind when you're planning your next body of work. The study is as important as your painting. It is something you can also market and your gallery will be very excited to have something else that they can show their client, show their collector of yours and build a whole narrative around your market and around your story. 
Well, that kind of wraps up what I wanted to discuss with this idea of studies. I know earlier I mentioned something about Arches oil paper, which is a product that I've really enjoyed lately. But stay tuned. I think I'm going to use that in a separate video coming up soon because uh, it's, it's a bit more of a deep dive. Anyway, please, if you've enjoyed the video, click the subscribe button. I'm very excited to add more content like these to the channel and stay tuned for the next one. Click the like button on this video and leave a comment below. Let's create a dialogue together. I look forward to the next video and our next discussion. Take care, everyone.